familiar to you? Yep, that's a leaky flow seal. Today on Raw Fuel TV, we're going to take the mystery out of changing those fork seals and getting back on the track. Raw Fuel TV is sponsored by Wheel Sport, your snowmobile, motorcycle, and ATV specialist. Hey, it's Steve from Raw Fuel TV. So today on Raw Fuel TV, we're going to fix this leaky fork seal on this 2010 KTM SX65. Now, a lot of you think that this is a tough, difficult, complicated process, but I think it's only because you're unfamiliar with it. So today we're going to bash on through. We're going to get this seal changed out quick. And we're going to get back on the track. Let's get to her. So we're going to run through the tools that we're going to need for this job. And starting at the top, we're going to use some plastic cling wrap, and that's going to help protect the, uh, the seal as we slide it over the inner tube. We're going to use a tape measure, a zip tie, form of a marker, a toothbrush, a pick tool, a small screwdriver, a light pry tool. We're actually going to use the front axle as well as a tool, a 10 mil wrench, we're going to use a small set of pliers, Allen key, and a 27 mil open end uh, or box end wrench, whichever, whatever you've got. We've also got our new seal, and we've got an old seal. You're going to see why we're going to use that. We're going to use a whole pile of this uh, paper towel, set of gloves to keep our hands free of dirt and oil and garbage, and last but not least, our fork oil. We're also going to be using a vise, which is just at the end of the table. So let's get on with her. Now, as we go through this fork seal replacement, we're going to use as few specialty tools as possible. That way, the average guy in his garage can get this job done. Easy, no problem, no hassle. Let's get started. So we're going to start with our 27 mil wrench. What we've done is we've already dropped the forks in the, uh, the triple clamps a little bit, and it's just going to give us slightly better access to the top cap. Now we've tightened down the bottom clamps just to hold the fork in place and we've left the top clamp loose. Why? Because when that's loose, it's going to allow this top cap just to spin off a lot easier. All right, now that we've got this generally loose, I'm able to spin this off by hand. So what we're going to now do is we're going to now remove the fork from the clamp itself, from the triple clamps. We're going to fix this up on the bench. All right, now one of the things today that's going to be our best friend is actually going to be this garbage pail. So we've taken a garbage pail. We've got a garbage bag inside of it, and at the bottom of that garbage pail, we've got an oil catch basin. We're going to use that to drain the fork. So we've got the fork off, it's resting on the bench. We're going to take the top cap, we're going to completely loosen that. And that's going to allow our outer tube just to simply drop down, slide out of place. So on this particular fork, we've got a four-sided nut. We want to grab a hold of that nut. On this one, it's going to be 19 mil. So just by hand, we're going to compress the spring down a little bit. We're going to grab a hold of this nut. Now on this particular nut, uh, it's got a slight ridge on the top of two of the sides, which is going to hold our 19 mil wrench in place. So you don't need a specific um, a holder tool in order to keep that spring away. The ridge on the top of this nut is going to do that for us. Next, we're going to shove on our 27 mil back up the top cap. So we're going to loosen this off. Now that it's loosened, we're going to remove the top cap. We're going to put that down on our clean uh, workspace here. We're also going to remove the spacer. Then we're going to compress the fork spring again. Allow our 19 mil to drop out. our spring. Now that the preload spacer has been removed, we're going to remove the adjusting tube. 
You want to keep all these parts in a nice clean area. You're going to wipe them down before install, but keep them in a nice, clean, smooth area. So at this stage, we're going to uh, let the cartridge slide back into the fork. And we're going to dump out this oil. So now you're looking at the inside of the garbage can with the oil catch basin. Simply you're just going to put the fork upside down and dump the oil out. When we're going to do that, we're going to reach in, we're going to grab the cartridge. And we're going to keep pumping the cartridge until all the resistance is gone. And it's basically going to be uh, helping us push all the oil out of this fork. Now we're going to let that sit down there for a few minutes just to completely drain the oil out and then we're going to remove the cartridge. Okay, now that most of the oil is out, this is the time where we're going to use our axle. We're going to shove this back into the base of the fork and we're going to take our Allen key and shove this in as well. We're going to use these to pry against each other. Now that we've got it loosened, we can remove the axle. And once we remove the axle, we're going to turn the fork back upright. And at this stage, we're going to remove the Allen head bolt out of the bottom of the fork leg. Okay, now that we've removed this Allen bolt, we're going to want to make sure that we keep our, uh, our seal washer with it. So just have a quick look there, and you'll notice there's actually a washer which is sitting on this. You don't want to get rid of that. Now this is going to allow our cartridge simply just to slide out. We're going to redrain the oil. So now that we've drained most of the oil from the cartridge, so we're going to wipe it off, keep it nice and clean. Kind of tuck this away out of, uh, out of sight, out of mind for a little while just to keep it safe. So now we're left with the inner and the outer fork leg. We're going to uh, pry off the dust cap. We're going to remove the, uh, the clip inside, the retaining clip. Now when we're dealing with these forks, we want to be ultra careful. Any tool that we're using in and around the fork leg, whether it's the outside leg or the inside leg, we want to be careful not to put any scratches, nicks, dents, dings into the tube, because that'll totally mess up our seal job. So with a small screwdriver or pry tool, we're going to uh, move the seal away from the outer tube. We're going to lightly place the screwdriver in, kind of get a little... Uh, fish a little bit of a crevice in there and we're going to turn the pry tool sideways and that's just going to uh, get rid of the dust seal. We're going to allow that to just drop out of place. Next we're going to take a pick tool or even a small screwdriver or something of that nature. We're going to find the, um, the retaining clip inside. There's going to be a couple of notches that you can kind of hook onto this. Once we find a notch I'm just going to pull this clip out and it looks like basically a big C this clip. So we can see, oh there she goes, she popped out pretty easily. So this is a clip that we're talking about and this clip resides right in here. You'll see it right up in and against the, uh, the oil seal. This is the oil seal itself. So we're also going to very carefully remove this retaining clip from the uh, inside shaft of the fork to make sure that we don't scratch the chrome. Put that away nice and safe, we're going to reuse that. Now you can do this one of several ways. Um, the traditional method has just been to kind of jerk these two pieces apart. You can also heat in and around where the seal is. So you use maybe like a hair dryer or a heat gun, something like that, not torches. But something like a hair dryer or a heat gun, it'll allow the mess metal to expand and uh, the seal will come free. In this particular one, we're just going to be able to give it a good couple of jerks and that is going to free the seal from the, uh, the shafts. And there you go. So, here's your outer tube, your inner tube, your seal. We're going to take all these pieces, put them away nice and neatly. So, now that we've got the lower part of our fork leg off, we're going to go through what these parts are, okay? So we got the upper sliding bushing, the lower sliding bushing, the support ring, the seal, this is your actual oil seal itself here, 
You've obviously got your dust cap right here at the bottom, as well as the retaining clip that we took off earlier. Now with the upper sliding bushing, there's a space here. You can probably actually even do this with your fingernail, or you can just simply take a pick tool, push that ring out, and you're gonna kinda lift it up. Uh, Any time that we can obviously avoid using a tool is the best. That way we're not risking scratching anything. But this is uh, it's a pretty easy uh, ring to, to slip off. And we've done it there. We're just going to simply pop that out. The rest of the items to come off are simply going to slide out. I typically take my pieces and I put them the way they were on the fork tube itself, they're going to go down that way on the mat. And they're also going to go in order. And there we go, we got a clean fork leg. Now job number one right here is all these parts have to be ultra clean. The more oil that we can get out, the better. A, it's going to make our, uh, the oil within the new oil that's just going into our fork tubes uh, or into our forks, it's going to make it a lot, uh, a lot better. It's going to be cleaner and it's going to give you a slightly more accurate measurement at the end when we fill it up. So let's start cleaning these parts off. Now we've got the dust seal here. It's always recommended that when you're doing your fork seals, you might as well replace this dust ring. Unfortunately for us, they weren't in stock when we were searching for it. We chose not to wait for it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna at least give this dust seal a good clean out, make sure there's no grunge or garbage within the seal itself. And we're gonna use a friend, we're gonna use some compressed air, that way we're not gonna uh, make a mess of the seal. Okay, so the seal is clean, so now what we've got to do is we've got to prep the lower fork leg so that it can accept the new seals and we don't scratch them or chip them or nick them. So we're going to take a small piece of cling wrap. Don't worry kids, your mom is okay with you doing this. So you go into the kitchen, you steal the cling wrap, then you take it, you're actually going to put it right over top of the lower part of the fork leg. So why did I do that? The reason why I did that is with all these grooves and ridges along here, if we slide that brand new fork seal over this, there's a chance that we might nick that fork seal. But when we have the cling wrap over top of it, what it's gonna do is it's gonna allow the, uh, the seal to slide on cleanly, crisply over this cling wrap, hopefully not damage the seal. Now we're going to take a bit of our fork oil, our clean fresh fork oil, just dip a finger in there with your glove on, and we're actually going to put that around the outside of the, uh, the cling wrap, and it's just going to make it a little bit more uh, lubricated I guess you could say, make that seal slide over a bit easier. So make sure you have these right, so the first thing is our dust cap that has to go on. Just going to manipulate it in place. We're just going to gently kind of rock it down. It, it is going to get hung up very, very lightly, but as we push down, you'll see it'll just slide right the way over. Next piece is, is our brand new seal. Now obviously we're changing the seal on this, so this has to be brand new. So you have to know which way the seal goes. It's, uh, it's got A, a slight taper to it, and B, the, there's a deeper side of the seal itself, kind of hard to catch that on the camera, but there's a shallow side and then there's a deep side. And the shallow side is going to go down with the deep side facing up to catch the oil. So we're just going to lightly push that on, make sure it goes over the ridge nicely, and there you got her. Now that we've got both the seals on, we're going to remove this. Cling wrap goes into the garbage. So the next piece that will go on top of that is the sport ring. We've cleaned up the lower slide bushing. Now we're going to put on the upper slide bushing. 
Now that basically locks everything in place. Now the reason why I said to keep the old seal is what we're going to do with this old seal is that we're actually we're going to cut it in half. We're not in half, I guess. We're just going to cut a uh, a slice out of it. So we're going to use this old seal as a tool to press the new seal in because I don't have a seal press here. So just kind of bend it in this oblong shape here. Do remember there is a piece of metal in this, so you want to be cautious in how you uh, how you uh, mount this over top of the uh, the lower fork tube. So once she's mount, mounted in place, then you're basically going to take the uh, the seal itself, the old seal, you're just going to kind of straighten it up. And what that's going to be used for is you're going to actually use that to push against to slide the new seal in place. Okay, so we've got our outside fork tube. We're going to blow it out. We're going to take a little bit of fork oil, new fork oil. We're just going to coat the inside area where that fork seal is going to go. It's just going to help it slide in nice and easy. And now we are going to slide the lower fork tube into the top. Now we don't want to use this as a ram, okay? That's not cool. It's not going to do anything that's, uh, that's good for our dust seal here. So we're going to slide this in. And you'll see that you're able to move the majority of this in with just your fingertips. The new seal will start to slide in. Then we're going to take our old seal. We're going to mate it into this hole, just like we were shoving this one in. And we're going to actually use the old seal to push in the new seal. All right, it feels like we've got that new seal in place. Take our pick tool. Now, this is where you've got to be ultra careful. You can either take a pick tool or you can take a screwdriver. And in that cut in the old seal, we're just going to lightly pry out. You'll see that that old seal will just lightly pry out of there. We're not even touching the fork tube at all. That way we're not going to nick it. And with our small pliers, I'm just going to get this old seal out of here. Okay, now that we've removed the old fork seal that we were using to push in the new fork seal, we're going to have a visual inspection to see if this fork seal has gone in deep enough. So in order to know that, we should be able to see the, the groove very clearly that the, uh, that the retaining clip goes into. If you can't see that groove, it probably means that you need to shove that fork seal a little bit deeper. Now in our particular case, we can see the groove nice and clearly. However, if you didn't, that's what the toothbrush is for. The end of this toothbrush is a pretty smooth surface. We can just lightly press it in between the, uh, the, the inside leg and we can actually touch right onto the fork seal without causing it any damage. That's the main thing. We don't want to jam a screwdriver or anything down in here. All that's going to do is potentially scratch the fork leg as well as uh, maybe cut the seal. So I've just taken the back side of this toothbrush We've made sure that it's nice and clean uh, and we've shoved that in there in order to press the rest of that seal in. Again, we're going to take some compressed air. We're simply just going to blow this out. Okay, we find our retaining clip. Again, same thing. Cautious when we put that on. We're going to take one end of the retaining clip. We're going to shove it right away right into the groove for the, uh, for the clip. That's going to hold it in place. And with the rest of the clip, we're simply just going to kind of slide it in. Now this is starting to click its way in. It's basically working itself in there. We're going to take a, uh, a small tool and we're just going to help it go in. We'll actually use the poke tool. We want to be really cautious. We're going to use the bottom side. We're going to use the bottom side, kind of the heel of this poke tool. And that's just going to help slide the rest of this clip in place. And look at that. Now do a quick visual inspection. Make sure that that clip is all the way seated into its groove and we can properly see that that clip 
is now seated correctly in the groove. It's nice and clean in there. So we're gonna slide the dust cap back on. Now at this stage, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to shove the cartridge in next. And that is gonna be basically the final step that we're gonna do prior to filling this gem up with oil. So let's get on. Okay, we got cartridge in hand. We'll give it another quick wipe down. We make sure that no foreign particles of dirt or anything have come onto it. It's good to go. We're gonna slide that down inside the tube. And we can just hear it bottom out there. We're gonna take our Allen bolt. We're gonna make sure that it's got our uh, seal washer onto it. Tighten this in. Now you're not gonna go bananas on this. Uh, it says about 25 uh, foot pounds. So we're gonna take our axle again. We're gonna jam that into the hole. We're gonna just use that basically to, uh, to stabilize the, uh, the fork leg and that'll allow us to tighten up. All right, we've got our 25 foot pounds on there. Remove the axle. Now it's time to shove this into a vise. We're gonna fill her up. Okay, so we've got our soft jawed vise. We've clamped in the, uh, the fork leg. Now we're gonna pour in. Uh, at this point, we're not gonna put the spring or any of the other components into it. Uh, all we're gonna be doing is we're simply gonna be filling it with oil. Go by what the manufacturer recommends. In this case, it's 220 milliliters of oil. And that, that actual quantity of oil at this stage isn't, ultimate, isn't ultimately important. The important part of stage is gonna come next when we're gonna measure the, uh, the air space between the top of the tube and where the oil meets up. Now, as the oil is uh, making its way down there, I know approximately how much I have to put in. What we're gonna need to do is, we're gonna need to pump the cartridge up and down. And what that does is it forces oil into the cartridge and removes the air from it. We need to fill up the oil a little bit more here in order to get the uh, you're out of this cartridge. Right about there, right about now. So what we are gonna do is we're gonna pump this fork in the cartridge, sorry. We can feel that actually all of the air is now gone. You're gonna know that it's gonna be gone because it's gonna be resistance and a clean resistance all the way through the stroke. There's gonna be no dead spots to it or like uh, hollow feeling spots. Okay, so for this particular bike, we are going to be measuring down the specs call for about 100 millimeters of space at the top of the air tube before you get down to the oil. So basically what we're saying is the oil is going to be sitting somewhere around here and we're going to want to take our tape measure and we're going to want to ensure that we're about 100 millimeters down, that the oil level is 100 millimeters down, plus or minus 2.5 millimeters uh, of oil in this in order to make sure that we have the correct, the correct measurement. Now I don't want to shove a tape measure down there, so what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've marked a uh, just a just a simple white zip tie, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the zip tie, I'm going to shove it down there, and when this mark is flush with the top of our uh, with the top of our inner tube, uh, that is going to tell me uh, well it's basically I'm going to be able to remove this and I'm going to be able to see what level the oil is at. So we're going to take this, we dip it down. Pull it out and I'm simply going to do a reading. So right now we're way, way high. We're about 55 millimeters. Okay, what do we do in this scenario? We've got too much oil in there. We don't want to unclamp the fork from the vise because once we start dumping it, we're going to have to re-bleed the air if we dump a little bit of the oil out. So we can get, again go to mom's, uh, mom's kitchen, we can rip off her turkey baster and we can shove that down in there maybe. We can get some of the oil out that way or if we have like a siphon style tube or a, uh, a thin tube that'll go down. So now we're going to resolve this the poor man's way. 
So we've gone into mom's kitchen and we've stolen some of her paper towel as well. And we got this paper towel, the ones that are, um, they have, they're pleated about halfway through. So they're actually, they're a smaller towel instead of the larger size. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold that into four. One, two, three, four. So we've now folded that into four. It's ultra thin. We smooth it down. So it's kind of about the size of a ruler. We're gonna take that ruler. Now the one negative about doing this is that if we're not smart and we do this wrong, we're gonna lose a piece of paper towel in there and then we're gonna to have to uh, disassemble the fork again and that's gonna be a nightmare. But I've done this before. I know it's gonna work. So let's get on. Once we've slid it by, all we're really doing is we're actually taking this and we're removing the oil by having it suck up the rag here. So we actually did a pretty good job there. We got a whole bunch of oil out on that first one. We don't want to mess around with our, uh, with our cartridge much because if we drop the oil too low and we start pumping the cartridge, we're going to fill it back up with air and then we're going to have to repeat the whole process over again. So we're going to check our homemade measurement tool. We give it a good clean off. Shove it back down to our marked point. Remove it. We can see this on the tape measure. Ooh, we're pretty good there. Man, nailed it on that one. Perfect. So now that we've got our fork oil set properly, or the height of our fork oil set properly, you can now shove in the rest of the goodies. So we'll slide our cartridge up. Adjustment rod. Now at this stage we're going to put our 19 mil wrench back on and that's going to basically hold everything in place. All right, so we've got our 19 mil wrench on. We've got our cap. Make sure that everything is nice and clean on here. Looks pretty good, but we'll give it one more, uh, one more wipe down. So everything is nice and clean. We take our uh, adjustment collar, which is that black plastic piece that we took out earlier. Put that back onto the cap. We're gonna tighten the cap back on. Now the cap's going to bury out and then ultimately we're going to need to bring the, uh, the locking nut, which our 19 mil is on, up to that collar or up to that cap. It's not going to be too many threads. We we'll take our 27 and we're going to snug these down. Now this one doesn't call for a lot, it's about 20, 20 foot pounds. Just about there. Compress our spring a little bit, remove the 19, make sure that the uh, preload collar is nice and in place. Take our outside fork leg, tighten this all back up. And at this stage it's just going to be kind of a hand tightening job. What we're going to do is we're going to throw this this into our triple clamp and that's what's going to tighten it down the rest. We're going to remove it from our vise. Let's head on over to the bike and get this sorted out. All right, so we've wiped down the outside of this fork leg. Make sure that there's no oil or grease on it because that's not going to help out our cause. We're also going to clean the inside of the um, triple clamps here. 
And that's going to make sure that we're not going to have problems when we mount this. I'm going to slide the fork up in the clamp. And we're going to get it to the uh, top of this fork leg is flush with the top of the top triple clamp. Just going to lightly tighten her down, just on the lower clamps here, just a quick tightening. And all that's going to do is that's just going to hold this in place. Going to go back to our trusty old 27. We got our clamp tightened up. And that's pretty much it. We're good to go. So we've tested out. We know that she's no longer leaking. You can install the, uh, the brake, the front wheel, all that, and you're done. So really, uh, it wasn't that hard of a job. Uh, we can all do it. Just take your time. Make sure it's, uh, uh, make sure you, you, you have everything laid out, all your tools laid out properly. Just take your time and uh, should get through her. That's it for this episode of Raw Fuel TV. We'll catch you out on the track. We stole a lot of things from Mama's kitchen. Mama's going to be none too happy with us. Ow! Damn it. There's one glove. Oh. Oh. If you enjoy these videos, subscribe to our channel, like us on Facebook, or check us out at www.rawfueltv.com.